Well, I was born on the west side of Chicago. We went through a lot of stuff, you know, growing up. We, we always used to play ball in the house low key. And I moved to countryside. Definitely my first memory of playing basketball was going to this park by my house called Ideal Elementary School Park. And I always thought he was the best, the best player out there. And we'd be up there from like probably 8 a.m. to like 6 p.m. And he didn't get caught up in travel soccer. He didn't get caught up in travel baseball. And so I think that was a big advantage that he had. It was a simple world. He had a basketball and he could play outside. I'd get there at like noon or something. I'd play for a couple hours with Ty, and then he would he, he I would I would be ready to go home. I'm like okay, I need to go home and eat. And he'd he'd say, oh, it closes at eight. I'm gonna be here till eight. It's like mom, I can't wait till next year, and I get to play with Terry Gurry, and it's gonna be so much fun, and we're gonna be so good. So I would live with my dad and my mom in countryside, which is probably like ten minutes from their house and stuff like that. Like since like. I don't know, we, weren't, we, weren't, we didn't really have that much money. His father had an early morning job, and on snow days, he would have to walk to school. They will always, they will always come pick me up before games and stuff like that. And we would see this like little boy, you know, in the snowstorm, just really walking down the street, all bundled up, and then we would pull over and pick him up. I don't even think my dad met them once or whatever like that, but like, I just always knew that they were amazing people. So it was a summer, I was, I was deciding if I wanted to go to St. Lawrence or LT. So then one day, I went off to the, my St. Lawrence camp. Before I left, I remember this, I was like, you need to go to the doctor. I'm expecting to come home on Monday when he comes back home. So then on Monday, my grandmother gets a call from the hospital saying, oh, uh, your dad has been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. They basically told, my mom told me, uh, and he told me, that he had about a couple months, three months, maybe a year to live. He was at the LaGrange Hospital. And the last words he said to me before he passed away, he was like, who are you staying with? I told him my grandmother, he, he gave me like a nod. He was like, okay. And then I, get, I said my goodbyes or whatever, thinking, thinking I'm come, gonna come back and visit because the doctor said he had four more months. Two days later, my grandmother gets a call your dad just passed away. Uh, when his father died, he had not told us that there were any issues. He put us all into a group convo and just straight up told us, like, my dad passed away. I'm going to have to move to the city. And I hear Bill on the phone going, oh, that's awful. Oh, that's awful. That's awful. And then I heard him say, well, if he needs somewhere to stay, he can stay here and go to school. At the funeral, I remember Mrs. Sloan coming up to talk to my grandmother. She was like, Tyrese could come stay with us to finish out his year of Gurry or something like that. But it just seemed natural because, you know, they'd already been picking him up and he would already kind of been a little bit part of like our family. I liked that idea a lot. Like I wanted to go back to my friends, like where I was living, it was amazing. Like I remember the night before we went to go pick him up and laying in bed and thinking, we didn't really know, I mean, we knew Tyrese but we didn't really know him. And I, I went into, you know, his neighborhood, which is a fine neighborhood, and there was basketball courts there. I'd be like, Therese, you know, do you play basketball right here? He's like, no, you know, my grandmother doesn't let me. They had a shooting there. First night was a party. It was, I remember we were outside playing basketball till our neighbors told us to stop. Once he came through our doors, uh, he was treated as our son. All the stuff that we taught Charlie and Matt from when they were born, Terry's had to have a crash course and learn it all in the very short time of like how we operated and our expectations and everything like that. There easily could have been a lot of problems, but he was really good at just like, anytime I did something stupid or mean to him, he would just let it go. When uh, my dad passed in Lance, I wanted like, a stage where I didn't want to do anything. And basketball, was, I love basketball, it was my passion. I just, I just didn't want to play anymore because it's like, I just, like, somebody I love about to get taken away from me. The main thing that got me out of that was my uncle Thomas. Like, he saw him, I was down and stuff. He understood all that. But he also told me, he was like, you have a gift in basketball. He was like, you need to use it. He let the bad motivate him and let all the, you feel me, the negative make him go stronger.
at the game, there's two little boys sitting in front of me <laughs> and they're sitting with their mom. I hear her go, boys, look, your favorite player's about to go into the game. <laughs> and they jumped up on, when he did, they jumped up on the thing and they were yelling, Tyrese. And then after the game, he's standing there talking to these two little kids. I do remember waking up one night at like three or four in the morning going, I don't have any money for college for this boy. And at that point, you know, he had just walked into our lives, so I, we couldn't plan for it. Of course, like, if I wanted to go to college or something, like, I wanted to do that myself. Like, because I knew I was a uh, full scholarship athlete, so, like, I wanted to make that happen. Like, if I didn't make that happen, I felt like I would have let them down. As far as him getting a scholarship, I mean, that's got to be one in 10,000. There's no way he should be in the position he is right now based on like what's happened to him, what's happened in his life. Like, Me picking Minnesota University of Minnesota Crookstone was one off the basketball. When he came back and he was so excited about going up there to visit and talking about the team and the coach, I'm like, you know what, he picked the right place to go. And he's certainly given us more than we've given him. At the end of the day, it's not about the offers, it's like where you end up. And the school I'm at now, I feel like it's going to be a great fit for me. Whatever God has in store for you, don't take it for granted. Just go with it and everything's going to work out.